Let's hear from Aaron Rodgers, shall we, on bouncing back and getting the win in week two. In the week, you said that uh, there wasn't a change in preparation, but was there a change in attitude, especially after some of you guys said maybe there was some overconfidence going to the same team? Mm. I don't know. I just guess uh, I think we maybe tried to show that we cared a little bit more tonight. Obviously, you cared last week, but did it, do you feel like it looked like you didn't last week? Is that kind of what you're implying? What do you mean? I uh, didn't even take that. <laughs> I just think people like to say a lot. Of, and it's nice to come back in here after a game like that. Aaron, because you mentioned it, did, did the national conversation irk you over the past week? Did it, did it bother you? Obviously, you were aware of what was being said about caring. I'm aware of it because of, of Tom. Tom keeps me aware of these things. I know that's only my first reference to him, but um, I, I think that there's, there's even more now than when I started playing. There's so many overreactions that happen on a week-to-week -week basis. So it's nice to, to come out and have a good performance and get the trolls off our back for at least a week. See, I... I I like that because it shows that he does have human reactions like the rest of us do to whatever happens. Sure. But the reality is, Chris, everyone said what they said based on last week's game because they sucked. Yeah. But I, it wasn't unfair. It was fair. Well, yeah. It was fa Now, some of it was over the top. I don't know if you saw the clip from your dad's show on CBS. Yeah. Your dad was the only one who didn't go all in. Nate Burleson and Bill Carroll went all in on Aaron Rodgers. I'd never seen anything like that before. So that was just one little slice yeah. of the national reaction. But when you're Aaron Rodgers, when you're the league MVP, when the entire offseason, whether you intended it or not, is about you, and you come out and play like that week one, that's what you're getting. So don't complain about it. Don't act surprised about it. Don't be pissed about it. You walked right into it. And you knew or should have known that if you don't show up and if you don't act like you give a crap week one, you're going to have an avalanche of criticism on the back end. Well, I know. But where I don't understand is, like, what, why didn't he give a crap in week one? I mean, I, he was still, after every play, looking at guys and going, what the hell and all that. But we just decided to go with that storyline because there was maybe he might retire before the weekend. I'm not talking about you and me. We didn't do that. Yeah, I saw my dad's show, the overreaction. You know, the, the overreaction is, like, not about the team. It just is all Aaron Rodgers. It's just all Aaron Rodgers. And, and that's where, to me, I, it just doesn't make sense, and it's not fair at times. You know, I, people got to go back and watch that game closely and tell me what Aaron Rodgers was really supposed to do. You know, I know we threw the interception down to the goal line. Damn, he made a mistake. But that's, that's my point. Shot. Rodgers can't – yeah, the double nut shot. Rodgers can't – he can't make mistakes. They're, they're not allowed. They're not a good enough football team. They're not. As you saw last night, it's all about Rodgers and execution. The run game wasn't, like, special. The defense is not special. Zadaria Smith is not playing. And that's where I get tired of, like, the trolling of, like, Green Bay. You know, some people just don't like Aaron Rodgers because of the way he acts and uh, I guess the way he answers certain questions. But, you know, the way people talk about him, he's the whole team. I mean, when they win, it's him. When they lose, it's him. He should be paid $60 million a year. The hell with the rest of the team. The hell with them. Because that's the way everybody treats him. And that's where I don't understand it at times. And that's where I think it goes over the top. He's aware of it. He handled it fine there in that press conference. I think he passed your test, right? And, like, the last thing I'd like to say here just to button this up is – Aaron Rodgers didn't cause this problem in Green Bay. Green Bay did. He's allowed to act like this. Any other superstar quarterback that got treated, lied to, has been crapped on through their career. No free agents. No big-time talent around them. And they, they would all act like this. They would Probably worse. Probably worse. So that's where I don't like it, and that's where I will defend them. And uh, that's all I got to say about that right now. But – I think the pushback on that is when you let it linger the entire offseason and if you're telling the truth, you don't make a decision as to whether or not you're going to show up until the weekend before the start of camp and you're 50-50 entering the weekend sure. and you see what we saw nine days ago, it doesn't take a whole lot of dexterity to put the needle and thread through the popcorn to get to the point where you ask yourself, is he really all in? Does he regret that he showed up? Did he just make the decision because 
you know what, I don't want there to be some big storm of something other than rain because I don't show up for the start of camp, even though I'm really not sold on being there. That was all fair when we saw the product of week one. And when we heard him say they were lacking in energy because, as we both agreed yeah. last week, how in the hell are you lacking right. in energy for the first game of the regular season? But yeah. it was different last night. They found a way to get the lawnmower started last night. They kept a bad situation from becoming worse. I expected them to win. I was curious as to whether or not they would pull it off. And when it was 17 to 14 at the half, I'm thinking, hey, maybe they are in trouble here. Yeah. They're scoring points at least. Their offense has shown up, but their defense under Joe Barry was not looking good. Everything worked out. And I think the rain did help. The rain with Jared Goff and the small hands and the Jared Goff and Jared Goff being who Jared Goff is. And I still don't know why the Lions felt compelled to take that gigantic contract that was a mistake by the Rams. But, uh, yeah, it all added up to that 18-point victory by the, the Packers. And it, and it allows them, short week, San Francisco trip, to, to go to California or Florida and uh, do better than the one in five they've been under Matt LaFleur. And we'll see if they can pull it off. It makes for a very intriguing Sunday night game because, again, we've seen two different types of team from a lot of franchises this year. And week three is going to help us maybe yeah. – Push the pendulum one way or the other on what we're going to get. I have a feeling the Packers are going to be pretty good on Sunday night, but that's a very intriguing game because maybe they won't be. Yeah, well, yeah, and it's a team like like the Saints or the 49ers or the Bucks in the NFC Championship we see where they have good defense and offensive fronts, and they usually get pushed around because they don't have enough elite players up there. So that's where I go, hey, we'll probably be having the conversation next week because Aaron Rodgers lost it. I don't know because they're going to lose to San Francisco on Sunday night. If you make me call it right now, I'm calling my shot right now. They're going to lose to San Francisco. I mean, uh -oh. unless something we're lacking. All that, all that stuff that you said about Aaron Rodgers and he was very happy. Right. Now he's going to be unhappy again. Yeah, well, yeah, but, but so wait, this is where I do. There's two things I want to go back to one, like, I know it's it's easy to question Aaron Rodgers and, oh, he was thinking about retirement leading up to training camp, but there was like 45, 50 days in between then, and he was all in on football, and nobody was questioning him in Green Bay, all right? They ran into a buzzsaw. They went into a place where they thought, oh, we're supposed to be at the Superdome playing the Saints. We're at a neutral field. We got more fans. Sean Payton had a red ass. They were getting, no one was giving them a chance. He wants to prove that they're going to win without Drew Brees. It was the perfect storm. That's right. Just everybody, I think, overreacts a little bit when it comes to Aaron Rodgers. That's just my two cents there. Then, like, back to the game, like, you know, yes, Rodgers and company executed on the offensive side of the ball. But how can you feel really feel good about Green Bay? Like, really go, oh, man, I feel good now. Man. I mean, Rodgers was executing a bet against a bunch of no-names in the Detroit Lions secondary, like whoop de doo okay? And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you know what I mean. Not national superstar household names in Detroit, right? Not now. They're, they're building something. And there they are. Okay, they go down and score on the first drive of the, of, the, of the second half. I mean, Detroit goes right down the field. They're in field goal range. They go for it on fourth and one. Goff misses the throw. You know, then it's okay back to back to the Packers driving down the field, and then it's Goff fumbles the ball on the snap, right? And that was kind of night night. I believe that's how it went down. Uh, yep, I'm trying to that was the moment, right? And that was Bubbled the moment. Snap short field. That was the moment. But I don't sit there and go like, oh man, Green. I feel better about Green Bay. They're dominant. They're back. No, again, you know my feelings. It's all too much on one guy getting in the perfect play at the line, making the perfect throw. Matt LaFleur making the perfect play design in the lab during the week. And, like, if they can't do that, I, I just th – that's where I question them because they're not just going to beat you with pure talent and brute force. That's, that's my biggest issue with Green Bay. And, and I don't disagree with any of that. They were fully expected to win that game and win it handily last night. That, that's – if they don't, then it's the five-alarm fire for right. the Green Bay Packers. Right. If they would have lost – to the Lions and had back-to-back -back regular season losses for the first time under Matt LaFleur and a Lions team they've mastered over the years. A Lions team that is still in shambles as it rebuilds from one culture into another. Yes, it would have been something that would have caused a lot of us to say, see, week one wasn't a fluke, but 
I think for now we can say it was a fluke, but the question is how good is this Packers team relative right. to the other good teams? We, hey, right. they beat a bad team. They did what they should have done. You beat the bad teams, and you try to beat as many of the good teams as you can, and maybe it falls together that you get a good spot on the playoff tree, and you can get lucky and win some games, and everything falls together at the right moment, and you find yourself in the Super Bowl. That's what all the good teams are trying to do. Exactly. But you have to take care of business against the bad teams. If you can't beat the bad teams, you got no chance right. to get to the playoffs or to beat the good teams. No, no so doubt. they did. Congratulations. They, they checked that right. box. But And Aaron Rodgers... Second half last night, he had some throws. Yes, he did. He, he, I mean, he had some throws that were very impressive. And, you know, anytime you see, anytime I see, and you've got me looking for this all the time, a guy making that throw that's just kind of like the flick of the wrist yeah. and the velocity and speed and distance that can get put on the ball with just the flick of the wrist, it's amazing to me. Yeah. And, and we saw a couple of those last night where he doesn't get the base set under him. He's moving one way, and he just fires the ball the other way, and it's like a lightning strike, and uh, right on the money, and it, it you can you can feel it give the team a lift no when he doubt. does that. That that's what it is, right? That's where they're scary because now you go, oh wait, they got a little mojo on offense. Matt Lafleur is going to feel good about his game plan. He had some cool plays. Rodgers got them into the right plays a few times, made a few awesome throws. To your point, within the rhythm of the system, and then like off schedule. You know, like you're saying, moving in the pocket, jumping off the ground, flick of the wrist type throws down the middle to Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams gets some confidence. You know, Robert Tunyon gets some confidence, right? And that's where you start to go, oh, Green Bay gets scary that way. Because if they do start executing and Rodgers is seeing the field clearly and really throwing the ball at his, like, 100% capacity, that's when they're dangerous. That's when they're dangerous. But it's just the other parts that I always question. And it's always on that little aspect where we're talking about right there. And they need Zedaria Smith back, but they're not going to get him anytime soon. So, and it's a work in progress on the defensive side of the ball. So I guess that's, you know, yeah, it was good. It was, it was good to see that, but I'm not sitting here yet ready to go like, oh, I think Green Bay will be back in the NFC championship game and they look like one of the elite powers in the NFC. I got to see a little bit more before I start saying that again. Along the way, Aaron Rodgers passed John Elway for 10th on the all-time yardage list, and Rodgers is just going to keep on climbing that, that ladder as long as he keeps playing. And Devontae Adams, who was quiet week one against the Saints, nine targets, eight receptions, 120 yards, 121 yards to be – I don't want to take a yard away from him. And, and he made a great catch on one of those Rodgers flick-of-the-wrist throws. Yeah. It, it was high, and he, he twisted his body and jumped up and got it. And it's just – you can just feel the momentum. When Rodgers is kicking it in and whipping the ball around the way that he was – you just you feel that the Packers are the Packers and they're going to keep doing what we have grown to expect them to do. That's the problem. To get back to the whole idea of Aaron Rodgers being criticized and dealing with trolls, when you are the MVP, when your team is as good as it's been, it creates an expectation that past results will lead to future performance. And when it doesn't, when you are a team that yeah. people are interested in, when you right. make yourself an interesting person, whether you deliberately are doing it, whether you're building a mystery or not, the way that he has conducted himself makes him that lightning rod, makes him that focal point. So when you don't perform, it's going to be noticed more than when Teddy Bridgewater doesn't perform, than when Kirk Cousins doesn't perform. Because Aaron Rodgers has made himself into this crossover figure. Yeah. This no. guy who's bigger than the game. A Tom Brady type of a figure. A Patrick Mahomes type of a figure. So when you crap down your leg, as you would say, to borrow one of your phrases, and for lack of a better term, <laughs> it's going to be noticed. So let's not be surprised. Yeah. That's the one thing. The, the indignant. Right. The righteous indignation. That's disappointing to me because Aaron is smart enough to know it goes with the territory. You're going to be the focal point of the league for much of the offseason because you're going through this public deliberation as to whether or not you're going to play and you're pulling everyone's strings and, you know, the puppet master and working it all out. And when you have a reputation for being smart, we assume that it's all very strategic and you have this very high profile position and you have the game that you had week one. Don't be surprised that people are going to criticize you. You're, you're the A-lister. Of course you're going to get criticized. You're going to get praised. You're going to get criticized. Whatever you do is going to be tracked, and it's going to be reacted to. Yeah. Don't act surprised. Don't get, get, get pissed. It's one of the products of being the center of attention. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I don't disagree with a lot you said there. I mean, he is. I mean, he, 
He's got a little snarkiness in him, you know, at times. You're right. He can say things. At I press. like it. I do, too. He could say things at a press conference that you're like, wait, that, that, that's open-ended. What did he mean by that? I don't really know, but that might not be a good thing for a team. I, I understand that, too. I think where, you know, if I'm in his shoes where I get frustrated and where I get frustrated for him having played football or growing up, you know, with a with a dad who played football and you see unfair criticism sometimes is it's just always on him. The team got railed last week against the Saints. And it's just there's nothing about the rest of the team. It's just Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers outplays Brady in the NFC Championship game, but everybody just talks about Rodgers can't win the big one. What? It's, just, it's Rodgers, huh? It wasn't Aaron Jones fumbling. It wasn't, you know, stupid defensive plays. It wasn't a holding that, you know, maybe led to a pass interference or that wasn't a pass interference and got intercepted by the Bucks. I mean, there's just – there's I think that's where it's just – it's always that. It's the Seattle Seahawks, the greatest defense we've ever seen. He's up 18-7. to 7. None of the rest of the team helps him to win the game. He loses that. Everybody blames Aaron Rodgers. You know, there's just so much of that all the time. And that's where I do at least have a little human compassion for him because – he is of that star status you're talking about, but doesn't have Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey or Chris Jones or Andy Reid, for that matter, or Rob Gronkowski or Antonio Brown or Evans and everybody else. And that's where it's not fair, but we still hold them to the same standard with those guys and go, we expect you to be just as good as them or better. And I just want to say his team is not on the same planet as those two teams, and it's not fair to expect that from them on a week-to-week -week basis.